Hello, my name is Sean Boyle and I teach here at Southern Illinois University in the Automotive Technology Program. And in this video, I'm going to cover the hydraulic operation of the 722.6 transmission. Here's the hydraulic schematic for this transmission. And I know it's kind of zoomed out and a little difficult to see. Don't worry, we'll kind of look at these a little bit closer to kind of get an operation of how it works. But I'll go ahead and point out a few things. And these hydraulic schematics on the top, you can see those are the clutches that we have laid out. Uh, the B1, K1, K2, B3, K3, and B2 clutches. And here's a manual valve that we got right there in the middle. And then all these valves right here are kind of responsible for the shift groups. And I've listed out these shift groups down here. There's a shift group for the B1 and K1 clutch, a shift group for the K2 and K3 clutch, and a shift group for the K3 and B2 clutch. And these shift groups are going to be responsible for applying, controlling the rate of apply for the applying clutch and controlling, controlling the rate of release for the releasing clutch. And the way they do that is through the operation of four valves. They've got a command valve, a holding valve, uh, a shift pressure valve, and an overlap valve for each of these groups. And those four valves are going to, like I said, control the rate of apply and rate of release. So kind of in summary here, this is the group for the B1, K1 clutch and its four valves. And then for the K2 and K3, we've got four valves as well. And that's basically the shift group for that. And for the K3 and B2 clutch, we've got its grouping of valves. Now, the reason why they have these two clutches um, kind of in each group, we've, like for example, the B1 and the K1, is because these valves right here are not only gonna be in charge of applying the K1 and releasing the B1, but it's also gonna be in charge of applying the B1 and releasing the K1. So they're always working back and forth. So for example, right now the K1's applied and the B1's off, but when we do an, uh, a downshift from second to first, for example, the K1 clutch is gonna release and the B1 clutch is gonna turn on. Well, these valves are gonna be responsible for controlling that. So to kind of look at this a different way, take a look at this chart I made. This is uh, another way to kind of approach this and view it and maybe try to understand it. If it works for you, that's great. If it doesn't, hopefully some of these other discussions or these other topics will uh, make it clear. It is a pretty complicated valve body. There's a lot going on with it. So I created this because it, it kind of shows the direction of control of a lot of these com components. If you look, I got those four valves, shift pressure overlap valve, command valve, and holding valve. And there are the two clutches that I've got. Uh, this one would be kind of depicting the releasing clutch. This one would be depicting the applying clutch. And then this part right here is a shift solenoid. The shift solenoid is what starts this process. The shift solenoid turns on for only about two seconds and it gets the command valve to move. And when it does that, it's gonna take the clutch that was applied and direct it to the overlap valve. You can see here, this is the clutch that was applied and it's finding its way through the overlap valve. And that's where that fluid is gonna drain out. It's gonna release its pressure through that. And this overlap valve is gonna control how quickly the fluid can release. And then it's gonna take the fluid from the uh, clutch it's supposed to apply, and it's gonna direct shift pressure through the command valve to that clutch. And this holding valve is going to be shuttling back and forth, and after the shift is complete, it's gonna hold pressure into whichever clutch is supposed to be applied. So I'm gonna just use this as a real quick example. If I'm in first gear, the holding valve is gonna be shuttled over in one direction, and when I'm in second gear, the holding valve is gonna be shuttled over in the other direction. Now during the shift, these command valve initially moves, and directs these shift pressure and overlap, kind of allows them to do their job, and then after the shift, it returns. And we'll see that specifically when we look at the hydraulic schematic and an example of an upshift. And on this table, we have the pressures that this transmission operates under. Unfortunately, you cannot check the pressures on this transmission, except for maybe the torque converter pressure. You can check that through the cooler lines if you wanted. Uh, but the line pressure, for example, is gonna operate between 60 and 320 PSI. There's no line pressure tap, so you can't verify that or check that. The uh, kind of jumping around here, we do have a valve for the line slashed shift pressure solenoid feed pressure, which is basically a solenoid pressure regulator valve. And it's gonna drop pressures between 60 and 125 PSI. So the, the, the line pressure and the shift pressure solenoids won't be able to see that 320 PSI. They won't be able to see anything above 125 PSI. I created a video right up here on solenoid regulator valves. It's such an important valve that I created a separate video for that. And anyway, continuing on, I also have this shift solenoid feed pressure. They're gonna take this shift pressure and knock it down even more to 50 to 55 PSI for the shift solenoids. That way the shift solenoids don't have to operate with high pressure. The shift solenoids, all they do is shuttle command valves, so they don't need a ton of pressure. So looking at these other solenoids, you're gonna see that this the shift pressure and the line pressure solenoid, they're fed with this regulated pressure here. 
maximum 125 PSI, and then they're going to be able to take that 125 PSI and either deliver none of it or anywhere between zero and 125 PSI. So the shift pressure variable force solenoid, its output is going to have zero to 125 PSI, and the line pressure variable force solenoid is going to have its output between zero and 125 PSI. And you're going to see what they do here when we look at the hydraulic schematic. The pressure from the solenoid is going to work on their valves to create either the actual shift pressure that the clutches are going to shift which, with, which is between 0 and 220 PSI, or they're going to ultimately control line pressure, which is going to go up to 320 PSI. So I've got this chart right here. You know, I'm getting a little chart crazy, but the whole idea of this is that I can take line pressure at the top and show you how it flows and where it goes and how it gets modified or manipulated from the pump all the way down to their clutches and individual components. So you can see at the top here in dark red, I've got regulated line pressure between 60 and 320 PSI. Whatever pressure is coming on my pressure regulator, that's the maximum pressure that this transmission has. Now we've got an example here in yellow. This is the valve that reduces line pressure to deliver to the shift uh, solenoids and the line pressure solenoid. So you can see this valve is going to knock the pressure down to 60 to 125 PSI. And where does it go? Well, that goes to the shift pressure variable force solenoid, or the shift pressure solenoid, if you want to think of it that way, the pulse modulated solenoid. It goes to another valve to knock it down for the shift solenoids themselves to 50 to 55 PSI, and our line pressure solenoid. So, like here, line pressure, they reduce that down to 60 to 125 PSI so they can feed the solenoid, and then that solenoid is going to control a valve to ultimately control line pressure. So the electronics that controls line pressure in this transmission, it's going to be done through the variable force solenoid or the PWM solenoid, and it's going to influence the valves that control line pressure. Okay, going back to what we did over here though, they knock the pressure down so the solenoids don't have to see a ton of pressure. And then for the shift solenoids, they knock it down again. So the shift solenoids and the lockup PWM solenoid, they don't have to see a ton of pressure. Matter of fact, they're only going to see between 50 and 55 PSI. So the solenoids, the shift solenoids, are going to operate 50 to 55 PSI, and the lockup PWM solenoid, we follow that around, and that goes to my lockup control valve, and it's going to basically control the torque converter clutch and deliver between 0 and 118 PSI. So think of it like a relay or something like that. They're using, they got high pressure coming in, they're lowering that pressure so that the solenoids can adequately control that pressure to ultimately control the transmission and the clutches and the overall line pressure. I know, I know, you're like, come on now, too many charts, but this is just another chart. Uh, kind of getting a little bit further and talking about the shift groups. So our regulated line pressure going to the solenoid feed limit valve, going to the shift solenoid feed limit valve, going to the shift solenoids, and then the solenoids control the command valve for each of those shift groups. Now that command valve is going to initiate a shift. The shift pressure solenoid, it ends up working on the shift pressure regulator valve for each group, and then that ultimately becomes the pressure, the shift pressure, that the clutch is going to apply with. So, I know, okay, now that might have been, that's one way to look at it, and maybe this will make more sense than following the graphs. Maybe I should have put the charts after this, so that way it, it might make more sense that way. But you can always play it in re reverse. Will that work? No, but anyway. So this is like one shift group, and you can see, I'm going to identify these valves. Obviously, we know the K1 and B1, those are our clutches up top there. There's K1, it is not released, and there's B1 that's applied at this point. Right now, we're in first gear. That's what the, uh, the little um, box says there. And here's my shift solenoid in yellow. There's my command valve, and you can see it's directing line pressure from right through here. See if I can follow this with my finger. Right up to the B1 clutch. Should be a weather guy, huh? No. I'll stick with this. But, and then we have this holding valve. And this holding valve, the pressure that's in the applied clutch is going to find its way around and work on the end of this holding valve and keep that shuttled over so that way line pressure is always going to find its way to the clutch that's supposed to be applied. And over here, I've got my, down here kind of behind this text box here, i got my shift pressure solenoid. It's working up against the shift pressure regulator valve, which is going to control 0 to 220 PSI. And then that's going to get directed through my shift pressure valve for the shift group. And it's going to come up and it's going to like stop. It's just going to hang out here. The reason why it's not going anywhere is because we're not in a shift phase. We're just in a gear. There's in-gear phases and shift phases. And 
once, we, once the solenoid turns on and we initiate a shift, then we're going to see this blue pressure, the shift pressure um, the, from the uh, shift pressure regulator, then we're going to see it do its job and start applying a clutch. And we also have this overlap valve, and I'm just kind of giving you a quick overview of what we see here. This K1 clutch, for example, right now is released. Uh, it's fully released, that's why it's that color, and you can see it's vented out. But you can imagine if this command valve shuttled over, the fluid that's in this B1 that's red, it's full line pressure, it's going to get directed into this passage right here. It's going to find its way down, oh, missed it, over, and it's going to get directed through the overlap valve and then exhaust out. So the shift pressure and overlap valve kind of work together. They work to control the rate of release on the releasing clutch and the rate of apply on the applying clutch. We'll see that here in a second. So down here, you can see I just mentioned that. Shift pressure will go to the newly applying clutch. Release pressure will go to the overlap valve. And the holding valve, which is right here, is what I mentioned before. We're gonna, it's going to hold pressure in whichever clutch I, I want. Like right now, they're, they're holding pressure in the B1. But if I started this shift, if I turn the solenoid on, that shuttled this command valve, I released the B1 and applied the K1, this holding valve is going to shuttle my direction now, and we're going to have line pressure kind of coming up, bouncing around, and going over and being held in the K1. This command valve, to talk a little bit more about it, you can see right there, that little, those little dots right there kind of depict a spring. And the spring is going to always hold this valve over to the right as we're looking at it here. And when they turn the solenoid on, fluid pressure is going to overcome that spring and it's going to shuttle it over. And that command valve, kind of as the name implies, it starts the shift process. And then they turn the solenoid off to return everything back. But they've designed this command valve that when it shuttles over and it starts directing pressures and the B1 starts releasing and the K1 starts applying, that's going to direct pressure over to the holding valve. It's going to shuttle the holding valve over. And then when they turn that solenoid off and this valve returns back to normal, now, because of the position of the holding valve, a different clutch is going to be left with full line pressure and the other clutch is going to be left fully released. That's pretty fancy. I love this engineering because they use these valves without any accumulators and they basically start this process and you kind of in your mind, imagine these valves just kind of clicking around and moving and modulating. And then when you're done, you just turn the electronics off and that holds themselves there. So the only solenoids that are doing anything while driving down the road is our shift pressure, our line pressure, and then maybe the torque of our clutch solenoid. But all three of the shift solenoids, when you're in a gear, they're turned off. So let's kind of do a little one-two shift here. Uh, you can see my solenoid turned on, my command valve moved over. When that command valve moved over, it took line pressure that was going to the B1 clutch, and you can see now it's kind of the zebra stripe. And that if you follow that zebra stripe around, it kind of goes down, as I mentioned before, it finds its way through the shift pressure regulator valve. And it finds its way to the vent. You can see that V there and the little splatter marks that they show. And you can also see that this can kind of regulate. Like that, the, that point right there is just uncovering that opening. So the position of this valve is going to control how quickly that fluid can exhaust out of there. And so you can see it has the ability of controlling the release based off of the pressure of the releasing clutch, which is working on the reaction end of this valve, and also the shift pressure solenoid, whatever pressure is kind of going into the applying clutch, and then also you can see the line pressure solenoid influences it on the end here where the spring is. So all three of these things, there's a lot of things working with this valve right there. But when you think about it, as line pressure or as shift pressure increases in the applying clutch, the K1, that's going to work on this valve. And that valve, because of the increased surface area right across that land right there, it's going to, as, as that shift pressure moves up, it's going to shuttle this valve over and it's going to allow this vent to open up larger and so then that's what they want, right? When a clutch starts applying, they want that clutch that was applied to start releasing quicker because they don't want both clutches on at the same time. If they have both clutches on at the same time, it's going to try to operate in two gear ratios. It can't do that, so that'd be a bind, and the, you know, the driver would feel that, the little head bob. And they can't release the clutch too soon because if, uh, in this case, if the B1 released before the K1 had a chance to apply, now you're in neutral, and vroom, you get a flare, your engine revs up. So it's important to control the overlap, the the applying clutch and the releasing clutch. And of course, they need to match that with the output of the engine. If you've got a lot of torque, a lot of power coming out of the engine, you're going to have to apply that applying clutch quicker and with more force. And that's where our shift pressure solenoid and our line pressure elevates to get the you know, quicker apply, the greater pressure, and the um, stronger applying force. That's what's going on with the releasing clutch. And you can see the pressure that was shuttled on this side of the holding valve. It's kind of going away as it finds its way out to the vent. And since that command valve is still shuttled over to the left, 
our shift pressure now that was coming from our shift pressure regulator valve to our shift valve, it finds its way into the applying clutch. And as it finds its way into the applying clutch, you're gonna see that that pressure is also building up on this end of the holding valve. So eventually, when they turn the solenoid off, the command valve returns, and you can see now the K1 clutch is applied and that pressure that's now in that K1 clutch is locking right through that passageway right there, it's locking that holding valve over to the right as shown, so it holds pressure into the uh, K1 clutch. Shift pressure goes back to kind of coming up here and hanging out at this portion of the valve and waiting. So also when this shift is complete and that solenoid's off, you can see that this released clutch, if you follow it down and through its little passageways, it finds its way over to a vent. So any chance of any fluid pressure being up in there is pretty nil because this holding valve as it shuttles, it's gonna provide a vent and a way for all that fluid to get out. So this vent is gonna always be uh, opened up to the released clutch so that no pressure can get trapped in there and uh, cause a clutch to drag. So these are the four valves and what they do. And think of the names of these valves because they really identify what they do. The command valve, it commands whether you're applying or releasing a clutch, it's kind of the start. It's like, command the shift to occur. And then the holding valve is like, okay, I must hold either one of these clutches in with line pressure. That's my job, I'm a holding valve. And then shift pressure, as its name implies, I've, I'm creating the pressure for the shift and it's going to the applying clutch and I'm also using that same pressure to control my overlap valve. And the overlap valve, two clutches, they overlap a little bit. You know, X-Force, we, uh, we need that overlap, right? The fluid pressure that's going up and the fluid pressure that's releasing, they need to have a little bit of overlap. If there was no overlap, flare. I guess it'd be like this. If there was no overlap, there'd be a flare. There'd be nothing applied there in the middle, middle of my V. And if they're both on, this one came on and this one didn't release, that little section bound up. So they need to have overlap. And I created this image here just to basically show you the, all the different check balls that they've got in here. Everything I marked with two, the little four spots, those are plastic check balls. Everything I marked with one, you can see there's eight of those, four over there and four way over there. Those are steel check balls. They've got this little plastic check valve here, number three, that fits in that little spot right there. And that's kind of upside down. I should rotate this around, but the flat spart, spart? but the flat part of that um, check valve faces up towards the spacer plate. And number four, which is right there and there, those are little filter screens that head to solenoids, the shift solenoids and torque over clutch solenoids. This valve eye is fairly well covered in the overhaul video and even in the aftermarket modifications video and talk a little bit about this in the electronics video. So there's, you know, I'm not spending too much time. I really want to go through the hydraulic theory and how it flows. But yeah, this, this is the pass-through connector. These are our speed sensors, the N2, N3 speed sensor. These two are pressure regulator um, solenoids. This is line pressure, shift pressure. This is the one, two, four, five shift solenoid, the two, three shift solenoid, the three, four shift solenoid, and that's the torque converter clutch apply solenoid. Got the manual valve right here, so when you're going between park, reverse, neutral, and drive, you're moving that. This is a park neutral switch and a temp sensor. The temp sensor is gonna read every time you're in reverse or in drive, and, but it's gonna read open when you're in park and neutral because this opens that circuit up. Now the valve body, as I said, I, I go through this pretty in depth um, in the overhaul video, take all the valves out, we vacuum check everything, so be sure to watch that. And in the aftermarket updates and advancements and improvements, we cover all the little improvements that they've made, which is all done in the valve body. It's a way to deal with worn out valve bodies and, and common issues that this transmission has. But that pressure ends up leaving these little passages and going into the transmission case. Okay, kind of wrapping this up, kind of staying with the hydraulic format here. This is just a picture of the valve body off of the transmission. And here we've got, you know, the different places that fluid pressure goes into the transmission case to apply their clutch. And I just put this in here because it seems like a good place to talk about it. You can air test these things. Uh, I made a plate that goes over this. My fingers, ah, but um, when you bolt the plate down, because these holes are real irregular, they're not perfectly shaped, so it's hard to get, a, I mean, you can't get an air nozzle in there. And if you put something over it, it builds enough pressure behind it, it usually lifts it up and squeaks and just, you can't really hear it apply. So I made a little plate, drilled some holes. You can apply the K1 clutch, the B1, uh, the torque converter clutch, if you put a torque converter in there, 
you can see it's got separate multiple disc clutch assembly and it applies. And then the uh, K2 clutch is there. Down here we got the B2 and the K3 and the B3. So yeah, you can air test these clutches and listen for the thud. Um, it's, it works well. You, you're just basically simulating hydraulic pressure, but you're using air. So use regulated air pressure. You knock it down to 30 to 40 PSI, because I can make pretty much anything apply with 130 PSI of line, uh, you know, shop air pressure. But um, if I can get it to apply with 30 PSI of air pressure, it shouldn't have a problem applying with whatever it operates with, with transmission fluid pressure.